Welcome to part one of my look at the new Precision Farming free DLC on Farming Similar to 22 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Precision Farming for Farming Simulator 22 has now arrived. In this part one, we're going to be looking at the gear and equipment that comes as part of the Precision Farming 22 pack. It is a free DLC, by the way. It should be in your mod hub by now. I know it took a while for it to appear on mine, and it came with update 1.4. So we've got another update for the game with that. It all appeared um, and you just download it like a normal DLC and then you can select it or deselect it in every single map menu. So if you don't want to have precision farming running, you don't have to, but you can have it installed. Um, it is 64.69 megabytes to download. Like I said, it has a separate DLC or mod. Won't cost you a penny. It's in the mod hub. We're going to be looking, like I say, at the gear and equipment that comes with it. We're going to be having a look at a couple of the start processes. I'm going to have touch very briefly on weed control weed control is not something i usually do um, i have got a couple of fields that do have weeds on it so i want to show you as part of the gear and equipment we'll have a look at weed control as well um, this may come in oh, i don't know two three parts because as we go through the processes and there's a sort of set order you want to do these things in um, there's the processes the screens all the things that come with it but we'll start off kind of hopefully gradually and we'll go through them sensibly I hope. Um, so you don't really want to kind of miss out on any of them. That's the theory anyway. If we go into our main menu, with it installed now, on the left-hand side of our screen, you'll probably see we've now got the precision farming icon. So if we go down one, we've now got precision farming as an icon. On the right-hand side, we've got, actually if we go back to, I think we want to start there, soil types. Soil types is sort of the, the first thing really you want to be aware of because that links into the first process you want to be really looking at and that's going to be soil sampling. We'll have a look, we'll have a look at the equipment in a minute. This is by no means the full thing, like we're going to have different parts. So soil types, loamy sand, sandy loam, loam and silty clay. No soil samples have been taken yet, but if you do, it will come up on the screen. If we go across one, we've got our pH levels. Um, and each crop type will have a pH level that's aiming for. Different ground uh, soil types will have different pH levels they're going to be looking for as well. Uh, nitrogen. Now, these are th things that we had on the FS19 version. Uh, and then nitrogen levels, and that's your fertilizing. So whatever fertilizing states you want to put on, that will be depending on the crop. Um, so... <laughs> There are two ways of doing that. Again, we'll look at that when we go into applying nitrogen in a bit more detail, but that's what next screen. Then you've got yield, so that will tell you what yield's going to be. On, and then you've got seed rate. Uh, this is a little bit different. And there's a screen that hopefully is going to come up now. And this is regarding seed rate for, um, like, per crop. Basically, what this says is what the different crop types are there down the side. And then depending on the soil type, how high, standard, or low the um, seed rate needs to be for that soil type as well. So the loamy sand, for example, it's saying there that for wheat, it's going to require a higher seed rate than it would do for sandy loam. Loam on its own, very low seed rate requirement. And it's to do with the ground type, the emergence of the crop. If it's harder for the crop to emerge from the soil in the quantities you want it to, then a higher application rate will need to be put in to get the rate you want to get from it. I hope that kind of makes sense. But that's that's what that screen's about. If we go across another one, there we go. Soil types. So I've done a soil sample already on this field, and this is the one we're going to be looking at in a moment. Um, and also, we're on the field here, and we're going to look at the equipment and soil sampling. So as part of this part one, we're going to look at soil sampling. We're going to look at weed control. But this was just to have a quick look at the screens. But we'll go into more detail on those screens as we move forward with this process. Now, if, and if we go on to that little one there, you're in, as you can see, your environmental score. Now, weirdly, I'm trying to look, because most of the environmental scores are set at 50 on the fields when you start. Um, and then everything you need to do on them afterwards. Now, you will only see that information on fields you own. And the same with when you don't, you can only do soil samples on the fields you own. That one is now saying 72, and you see some of the blue bars there have gone up because of, I'm doing weed control, and I've done um, my soil sampling on that field already. So, like I say, just a brief overview of the fact that we have now got the precision farming separate section. 
the different screens, we will do a slightly deeper dive into those at a later date. Now, starting off with, what's the equipment and then the gear? What do we start with? What comes new? Just close the control menus. Uh, I'm going to start with the RTK stations. Now, RTK stations, we had an FS19 as well. We've got a building with RTK station and a shed with RTK station. You only need to place one of these on your farm, on your map. When you do, that enhances the GPS. And what that should do is make your AI workers 11% faster. It's supposed to make them more accurate on their turns, accurate on their work, and they should work faster on your fields. If we go into our build mode, and we go to sheds which is where you'll find them now these will only appear if you've got precision farming installed and you put it selected for the map i know when i did the precision farming videos on fs19 people were asking me i can't find it it's not there and it just they didn't have it installed it's not going to be there all the time only if you've got it installed so the building with rtk base station is um, one slot anyway 17,500 and the shed with rtk base station 39,500 and two slots so you can pick whichever one of those you want and i can place that on my farm as long as i've got a sp space for it there we go so that should now once placed make any ai workers 11 percent faster across the field so that's the first bit of kit and gear we're going to be looking at uh, now on fs19 as time progressed modders bought out smaller versions of these ones that were more like the weather station it didn't have to be a whole building that kind of thing so i'd anticipate we'll get more of these appearing as time moves forward uh, so next up on the list is uh the return of the iceria scout the iceria scout is your soil sampling tool now i know a lot of people found it frustrating using this and it it can be and it can be time consuming i think this the, i could be imagining it i think the area that this covers now is larger I, I think it's larger you'll find this under tools and i think it was under miscellaneous so we've got the iceria scout there 17 grand uh, you can lease it you don't have to buy it so if you're going to do crop sampling every now and again uh soil sampling you can that's what you get there's no options it's 17 grand uh, so what we'll do is just utilize it you can see with the map open at the bottom that's the disc that's the circle that will be soil sampled when i use it I, i'm sure that's bigger but i could be imagining it so we um at the moment i have already opened it up but that's how it comes folded now if you've if you've used um, these before this is nothing new if you're new to the game and you're new to precision farming this is still new so I'm going to explain it anyway um, so we unfold the soil sampling unit like that we can lower the soil sampling unit and then we take soil sample by pressing square Ooh. it's taken a soil sample in this little tray below and it should come up bottom as we go forward now that's a little bit better in that yes whilst it is a circle it's showing on the ground or like on the map it's taking a more of a, a squared off sample the one thing i found before i suppose it'll be taken out of there um, using it could be frustrating so you move to the next section you'll get a little bit of overlap that's not too bad take another soil sample press square again And it says soil samples taken too. It will tell you how many you've taken. And then when you send your soil samples off, it charges you for how many soil samples. Um, Trying to think what it was before, but we'll send them off anyway. Now, if this is something that's going to frustrate you, now bearing in mind as well, this is a very small field. <laughs> and as you can see, soil samples taken. We've done those two. I, I'm sure that's a bigger area. If you're doing fields like that, it's going to take a lot longer. So here's the thing, and this, this covers the soil sampling section of precision farming, really, if we think about it. You have to own the field, but for example, if I click on this field here, down the bottom left, it says purchase soil information. So if you own the field and you don't want to spend time doing soil sampling, that you don't have to anymore. They've added this in. So if I purchase soil information, for example, on field 37, press triangle, and it will tell me there, number of soil samples it will take to do that field is 23, um, 1,150. I'm wondering if the price has changed. And then the service provider cost for providing you with that soil sample um, or that the soil sample map is 862. So for 2012, I can get a soil sample map done for me 
doesn't I don't have to go out over the field using the soil sampler. So those are the two ways we can look at soil sampling now. Once your RTK station's done, the first step in all the precision farming stuff you're going to need to do is soil sampling. So those are the two ways of doing it, the Isaria Scout or doing a soil sample by purchasing the map, which again, if you're going to get onto much bigger ones, you know, that's a no-brainer really. It, you know, unless you've got plenty of time and you find it relaxing and you just want to go around and bimble about and quite happily take your soil samples, you can. It'll save you a bit of money and all is good in the world. I'm just going to head forward and take another one at the bottom here. Let's take our soil sample. And again, this is, this is another reason why I think maybe doing the buying a soil map, because now I've got that big area which is going to, it's going to charge me for a full soil sample but I'm only taking a soil sample on the tiny edge of the field but to get an accurate read on the field for everything you need for doing all the um, automatic application rates and that kind of stuff for seeding now and fertilizing and weeding and everything you need soil sampling you need the map to be accurate you need it to be the best coverage you possibly can so I personally think yeah the, having that addition in now to, to purchase a soil map is a better option now Part of what it adds, it says, is the John Deere Gator. Now, the John Deere Gator was, I think, part of the... Um, we didn't have it. I'm pretty sure we didn't have it on FS19 until we got the Precision Farming DLC. Um, now, this obviously was standard in-game now. It's on the list. It says John Deere Gator. But anything with a three-point link, you can run the Iceria Scout on. Uh, so what we do now, if we go to our map, you'll see we've covered that field. If we go back into here and then do L3. It says send soil samples for analysis. So I press triangle, they'll go off. I'll get my results and our map soon. So that's done, that's sent. Let's raise that up. That's the Iceria Scout and that's the um, soil mapping portion, portion done. I mean, that, that basically, that covers it. Uh, next on from there, we've got the sheds, Iceria Scout, bear with me. We've got this. This is the Iceria Pro Active. Now, this is a crop sensor. So our crop sensors, in either form, and like I say, we'll have a look at them in a moment, um, they're essential as part of it. And even if you've got your soil sampling, you've got your soil sampling done, that's fine. But as far as applying your nitrogen, which is going to be your fertilizer, um, these will do um, kind of on-the-spot measurements. So it's, it's actual real-time, the software on it, um, it says crop sensors and software, and the software running in the background calculate the amount of nitrogen that is needed to release the crop's full yield potential and display the results on a nitrogen nitrogen map applied to every field. So even you've got you've got your soil sampling done, that's fine. Obviously, we're not putting nitrogen on the ground yet because there's other steps to do. We're going to go into more detail on this as well when we get later on on the actual steps of doing our precision farming. We've done our soil sampling, but just to say, well, this is the crop sensor and that's gonna be crucial for making sure you're putting down the right amount of nitrogen on the field, depending on the soil sampling taken. It does also say time of year. Um, it does mention seasonally, biomass nutrient content of crops vary across each field seasonally. Um, so once the crop's in the ground, that's when you're gonna put your second lot of nitrogen down. Well, I say second lot if you decide to do first or not. Um, and this will then you know, give it a far more detailed and it puts down exactly what you need to. You're not over fertilizing, you're not under fertilizing. Um, it's, and again, another addition to the game. This you will find under miscellaneous on the end there, the Aceria Pro Active 23,900. Slot count on that is one anyway, so stays at that. We can have it standard, three point link mounted, just as the crop sensor but you can have it with the 10 wrinkle uh, fgb weights 600 uh, the 750 the 1000 1500 or the 2500 kilo weight so added on to a weight package now that would be if you're going to be doing your your sensor work while you're towing something else behind or you've got something on the three point three point link behind to balance out your vehicle if you want to have a weight on it too um, those are your options on that one and then the other version of it, 
you'll find actually on the tractors themselves. So if you're looking for it and you can't find it as a separate option, that's because when you go into each vehicle now, what's been added in, if we go down and look at our options here, it says Iseria Pro Compact. So we've got the um, Pro Active, which is the one that works day and night. Uh, if we look up at, um, I think it goes on the mirrors. If I put that on, it's 14,950, and it says there, the Isera Pro Compact detects real nitrogen demands of your crops while driving. With this sensor over your field, you'll get more precise information of the nitrogen that is required. With this information, the fertilization will be more accurate and results in a higher yield. Compared to the Isera Pro Active, this sensor can only be used during the daytime. So up there on the mirrors, take it off, put it on. So 14,950. Now, unfortunately, the downside with that being, you can't lease it. You put it on your tractor um, and you can't switch it between tractors. This one, you've got to pay for it on every single tractor you have. As far as I can, there's no way of switching between them. Because if I go onto a different tractor now, um, you've got the, the option on that one, Osaria Pro. Again, we just put it onto those. And it's got a little box it puts on the roof as well for operating them. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not actually... Uh, as yet, because we're looking at these for the first time, this one um, opens out, unfold crop sensor. Now again, I'm assuming the crop sensing ability of these spreads out a lot further, kind of goes out wider, because if I'm doing crop sensing and I'm putting fertilizer down at 42 meters, that obviously is not 42 meters wide. Um, so. I guess it will then it will radiate out and the same with the ones that go on the wing mirrors um it doesn't have to be the same width as whatever it is you're pulling behind you um so that's for nitrogen so those are two additional ones there's Iceria scout Iceria proactive and the Iceria pro compact which goes on the mirrors of the vehicles um next then um additional equipment we've got this now this has also got something added on, but it adds it onto the other ones as well. Um, this is the see the Gallant Cotter PTR 30,000. We've got plenty of these already, but this has been added as part of the um, the DLC, and it's got you know it's got a extendable pipe and stuff like that. So if you want to go for a more immersive feel for it, that box is something we're going to be looking at in just a second as well. But that is new 30,000 liter slurry or digestate spreader as part of the kit. If we go down to our tools and equipment go to our slurry tanks right on the very end the PGR 30,000 30,000 litres 350 horsepower required that's only one slot as well slot counts are much lower on the stuff they're putting in um, and for all intents and purposes it's it's a slurry spreader like any of the other ones but it does have to, it's got a three point link on the back which means you can put whatever you want whether it be um, drag hoses uh, cultivators that drip feed while they're cultivating all the various different attachments are on the back the um, tank in in of itself doesn't have a width capacity on it. It's the attachment that goes on the back that gives you the width capacity. Um, it's got various different options with regard to tyres. Um, we've got Trelleborg, Michelin, Vredestein and back again. But this one does have the John Deere manure sensing. If you look at the top pipe, you'll notice the one we already had. If we put that on yes, 10,900 puts that yellow box in. The John Deere manure sensing system detects the nitrogen in the manure as it's going through. Now, when it says uh, manure, the nitrogen in manure is never homogeneous, it's not standard. If you think of slurry coming out of a slurry tank, slurry container at a farm, if you've got cows or you've got pigs, um, you're going to have water maybe gone into that, maybe a runoff, maybe rainwater. So as it goes into the slurry tanks and... Um, and equipment, you're going to have pockets of slurry or digestate in there which have got a higher nitrogen content than others. So you might have watered down areas in there and then you might have very thick high um, nitrogen level areas of liquid within that tanker. So as it goes along the pipe, it's constantly measuring the nitrogen level of the slurry as it's going through. So what it does, it then adjusts how much output comes out of your your drag hoses, your cultivator, whatever it is you're pulling behind it, for that amount that's coming out, whatever the, the nitrogen level is, it will then adjust so that you get the correct nitrogen application across your entire field. That would also then depend on your soil mapping. So you've got your, your um, variable application rate in that. There are areas of the field that require more or less anyway. And then that will also make sure that that's being applied accurately and 
as evenly as it possibly can be within the application rate you put on as well. Now that comes with that standard, but I say standard, you have to add it on. It's now been added in like the the wing mirror sensors. If we go into any of our slurry tanks or slurry spreaders now, we have got the John Deere manure sensing. If we put it on, it puts the yellow box. If we go to any of them, let's go to a small one, the Brewery Field Master. That's now been added in there as well. Yes. We can add it in so that can now be added onto all the previous ones which is good because it does mean you don't have to have the 30,000 you don't have to have that precision one on you have to have the precision farming dlc on and enabled for it to be able to be used on the other ones so this won't now just be there all the time it needs to be have precision farming on i know it sounds like i'm you know i'm not telling people they're idiots or anything like that just to be aware that it's not going to be there unless you've got precision farming on but it is it will fit retrospectively. Not on that one, though, by the look of it. What about that one? Oh, yeah, box on the back there. But not that. Yeah. Okay. Well, not all of them, then, it would appear. Uh, so that's the next one. And then I think finally for kit being applied, and this is the one that's going to um, be more apparent. Now, like I say, all of these we're going to be looking at in a lot more detail as we do the processes as part of precision farming. I apologise if I, I know I'm, I'm worried when I come to edit this, I'm a bit dithery. I'm, there's a lot of information. I'm trying to bounce between different screens to make sure I give you the correct information. Um, so the last one then as part of what gear do we get? is the John Deere R732i Power Spray. This is also one slot, it's 28 meters wide. This will do liquid fertilizer or herbicide. Now I've got it uh, for herbicide at the moment because what we're gonna look at very quickly is weed control. I'm, prob I'm probably not gonna touch on weed control again as we go through, unless as we do the other process, we get weeds come up, in which case we will. Now it doesn't say, interestingly, um, I'm just looking on here, variable rate weed control. It doesn't say anything about manual weed control. Now, I know when it first was announced, it was kind of said that the base game or the variety of options, if you use herbicide, you take a hit because um, it's bad to use herbicide and you want to be removing the weeds manually. As far as I can see at the moment with this, using it, it does say that it imp improves your um, overall score because you're spot applying now. Now the problem is because I've come onto this map um, and the weeds haven't grown since, they're already in the field and you see some I've already killed off. Where are we? I've got to get some green ones in a minute, here we go. They seem to be pretty much across the entire field at the moment. I've got loads of weeds on this field. With precision farming installed, your weeds will become more patchy now. The point of using that is that's got the option for sensors on it as well as you can see there are sensors on there which means this will spot apply herbicides more specifically um exactly where it's needed and when you drive across the field the nozzles will fire on and off and you'll kind of see it as we go across the field it's a, it's a lot more stark and obvious when you're on a field with patches because you can drive across the field nothing will happen and they'll come on but you will see them firing on this field as we go across um Again, I think it's a really cool addition. I, I don't generally do weeds. And I'm, I'm really not sure. I, I assume it's still better to remove your weeds in the smallest state possible. If I go onto the field, you'll see bottom right, um, precision farming is telling me my pH level is bad, my nitrogen level is bad, what my expected yield did in my yield potential. When I go up to where the weeds are, it says weed, small and herbicide. I go across the bits where I've already taken them out, that disappears. So it just says growing. And it doesn't say manual. It doesn't say weed small weeding. It says weed small herbicide, very specifically herbicide. Uh, I suppose what I need to do is later on, when we do the rest of the testing, we might need to do a test with a mechanical weeder and see how that fares. But what we'll do, let's open it up. This you'll find under sprayers, on the very end there, the Power Spray Precision Farming Mod. Uh, that is only one slot, 28 metres wide. Now if you wanted to, you don't have to have the sea and spray system on. 
it uses um, machine vision and artificial intelligence software so that below each nozzle the sprayer will turn on and apply herbicide if there's actual weeds below them. That's the point behind it. But obviously you need to have precision farming installed to have this particular mod. Um, again, we've got the option, and let's go up. We've got Trelleborg, Michelin, Continental, Midas, Ragestein. Back again. Standard and Narrows, I think on the Trelleborgs, and I think all the others is just whatever you get, standard, yeah. Back to Trelleborg. And then the Sea and Spray system is 39 grand on top, so it's not cheap for the Sea and Spray. So unlike the Slurry Spreader, it's not a retrospective refit. You can't have the Sea and Spray system on any of the others. It's only on that particular, the R732 Power Spray. So that's good to know. Standard sprayer in that format. So if you're just doing fertilizer spraying, it will do your application rate based upon your sensors. So those crop sensors we already looked at, you can have it like that. If, you, um, if you're running weeds and you need to do your herbicide spraying, you want the C and spray system on um, because it's specifically for weeds. Uh, if you're not doing weeds, you don't have to have that on and that will just do your liquid fertilizer application, uh, chemical liquid fertilizer application. So what we'll do is let's now. So this is kind of this is weed management if you're using this particular bit of kit. So we need to go and find where the weeds are first. Let's raise the boom up so we can see the nozzles firing. Let's get to a bit where I know we've got weeds and let's turn it on. So as you can see them flickering. Some sections are on. The left-hand end, look, the nothing is spraying because I've already killed the weeds that end. And the others are flickering on and off depending on where there are whether weeds below. Now, like I say, because this is a field I inherited when I kind of came onto the game, there's a lot more weeds than there will be, I think. As they grow from now on with precision farming on, you're going to get them more in patches, but those nozzles are firing on and off when they need to be. On the left-hand end, nothing. And if I gradually move over, you'll notice that more and more of those nozzles will shut off because there's no weeds below them. I've already killed the weeds further over. So it will only apply where it needs to, where there are actually weeds below it. I mean, that, in essence, that's the, um, that's the power spray. That's what it does. Um, but again, you need to have... Um, well, you need to own the field for a start. So that's the last bit of kit, the last bit of equipment you come, you, or you start with. So this first one was, like I said, right from the start, was just to have a look at the kit and equipment. I apologise if I didn't explain them in enough detail, but it was just to show you what they were. And what we're going to do in part two now is we're going to run through the process, hopefully, and it, that may need to be in two parts, because I think it's going to be a lot we're going to need to do, of going through from soil sampling the next steps what we apply when we apply it how we apply it and how will the various different application rates and things work um hopefully i'm looking down my list to see i don't think i've missed anything off that list of gear pretty sure gator power spray isaria pro active compact scout cottage garant building with rtk station and shed with rtk station yeah so that's part one the gear we've looked at soil sampling we've looked a little bit at the power spray for herbicide hope you found this useful and informative in some way shape or form please come back for part two we're going to go more in depth on all the various different processes and actually use all of the gear in anger um, if you have found this useful and informative please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do Thanks for watching.